Hello and welcome back in other waters. Let's no, let's go back to hub because we have another. Hmm. Mina is gone and she's left behind one hell of a mess. This space is falling apart. Cannibalized to build way stations out in the ocean. The communications array sliced away. Life support failing. Wait, no, that's not it. I was born on Earth. Born in the city of Ponta del Gar de Grada, out in the Atlantic, among the turquoise waters and green slopes of the Azores. My father was studying the dying waters, chasing the last known pot of sperm whales to record a final fading image of their impossible spatial language before it was lost forever. My mother was a journalist writing a book on citizen scientists that never found a publisher. We lived there, and all along the Atlantic coast of Europe for almost a decade before life became impossible, the storms staring into the tidal walls, flooding city after city, clothes twisted in foaming water. <coughs> we joined the latest waves of refugees, found ourselves beside the Thames, settled in, resettled in London. From that privileged viewpoint I watched our oceans die, and then my parents too. At so and at some point, once I had left that sad grey planet behind on a string of bipolar contracts, I forgot that Turkos water ever existed. You were born here, and maybe here things can be different. And we need to go back here when there's something. Okay. I kind of know where it is. And I am actually so sad that it's making me cry. Oh, God. Since I am a person who was taught ever since I could understand that we are only a guest on the earth. So, as good guests do, we should never leave garbage behind, never destroy what's not ours. And here, nothing is ours. I think it's here. Or maybe not. I think it's somewhere here. Shed tail. Yeah, it is. I'm fairly sure we had that. Maybe I used it by accident. But I am fairly sure we had that. No, we had that. I tried to analyze it a couple of times. I had to get rid of it by accident. Yeah, it's it's possible. Yeah, I got rid of it. This section of a pillar worm's tail has shed light on their hunting and feeding behaviors. The tail itself is made from many panels of bright translucent hidden. Given the tail's brightness and the way it waves in a current, it's reasonable to conclude that the worm is using it as a lure. It could be an effective tool for the worm to attract small grazers to a panel's mouth with, before pouncing from the barrel and pulling its prey into the hole with it. However, the tail might serve another function too, as a countermeasure against predators. Was this specimen bitten off or willingly ejected? Either way, the pillar worm remains good at hiding its secrets within those dark barrels. I guess this is her room now. Where we go? We are going to the deep pants.
We are almost out of hydrothermal vents. Three kilometers down. This has to be close to the suit's range. I can hear the place creaking. Somehow we are maintaining one atmosphere of pressure inside the heart suit. If we make it back up, we'll be setting a strong first record for deep dives on Gliese 667cc. There's almost nothing in the water column here. No life to speak of. But the ocean in mind should be somewhere ahead. That's our target. Whatever monster Baikal left us, I'm ready. Let's find it. Layered with a wispy fog of oceanic ooze, the darkness of the plane is absolute. Streaks of iron ore have occurred across the seafloor, the mark of nearby hydrothermal activity. There's not enough oxygen down here to use the rebreather, so I am on reserves. The survey data we pulled shows the vents running north from here, along a ridge. Keep moving, we haven't got long. Edges of volcanic rock poke through the sediment, black strips against the bright mineral and metal ores. A soft whiff of sediment flakes catches in the suit's lamps, falling from the venting fluid as it spread into the water above. Black plums of fluid rise from crystalline chimney, discolored with yellow sulfur streaks. Incredible. Look at these things. I remember reading about the discovery of hydrothermal vents on Earth centuries ago. Donnelly, Corliss, and Van Andel, three geologists, they never expected to find life in that eternal darkness. And yet there it was. Whole ecosystems we never knew were there, totally independent of the sun's light. They were imagined to be models of alien ecosystems, life in its most extreme forms. But until this planet, that proved to be false. To all of humanity, the universe was dead. Then Baikal for keeping this place from us, for keeping humanity in the dark. Bone pale sand mounds surrounding the chimneys like great piles of cremation ash. Towering pale spires shimmer with the intense heat of the vents as chemicals are pumped into the water from deep within the planet. Rich in minerals, the black plums of the vents tower over us, fading into the black of the ocean above. The overhangs shimmer with trapped gases, reflecting the twisted shapes of strange dead creatures in the spiral space. I don't understand. Where is the life? This ecosystem is totally barren. All these minerals, nutrients, heat, and nothing feeding off it? How can this be? Could it be just this vent? Let's keep looking. The rubble of sealed chimneys lies all around. The hydrothermal fluids seeking other exists, exits from the new vents. Mounds of grey rock set in a bed of pale talc sand, evidence of ancient volcanic processes. The intense heat of the vents quickly fades off as the sitting suit with the cold sea water. Another vent is beginning to form in the rock here, a low pile of crystalline anhydrite starting to gather. Out of sight of the vents, hidden in the dark, the heavy silence of the sea floor returns. Eons of sediment blanket the sea floor, so pale and empty. The artificial mind Akar was building down here, what was the end goal? Was Baikal hoping to control this whole ecosystem? An entire planetary agriculture attuned to fit their needs. An ecology manipulated by the possibility of good genetic rewriting, a power stolen from the artificials, an enslaved planet like Earth. I know now why Minaya was secretive. She knew that if they found this planet again, that would be for be it for life here. Another vent chimney, where 
is all the light that should thrive on the rich fluid which blackens the water. Strange tired and curved rocks sit all around, distorted by tectonic processes and stained with mineral growth. The surfaces around this vent are thick with sediment, but absent of all life. Even the ubiquitous bacterial mats are nowhere to be seen. Another barren vent. This place has been wiped clean. Something is wrong here. What did they do? Around the base of the vents, gas bubbles stream out of cracks from the pillars which glitter beautifully in the suit's lamps. The bleached sand is almost per perversely clean. No life has marked its surface in decades. Another spire sits at the edge of the cluster, filling the water with blackened fluid like a lifeless bonfire. Here, away from the vents, pile and piles of distorted corpses lie, their whole bones dusted with pale sediments. God, look at these creatures. The bodies, it looks like progressive ossification. The muscles have become bone. The mutations are extreme, like cancerous growths. There is no structure to their anatomy. The my is that what it may? These senseless monstrosities? Radial pillar piles of long dead creatures frozen in crippled states of deformation scar the seafloor. The corpses become a mass of undeterminated matter with the occasional shape of a bone or shell, like tooth print inside a tumor. A vast organic sphere towers over the corpses, its own geodesic patterns mirroring those of the artificials. The mind. It's huge. But it's silent. It's been silent for decades. This is no cradle of life, it's a grave. Did they fail? Is this all that's left? A broken mind lying in a bed of corpses? They had no idea what they were doing, the arrogance of all this. The whole ecosystem boiled down to nothing, the artificial loss to us. These are bicycled crimes, Akari's crimes, all the waste. Is there nothing left? We should look inside. A vast ornate structure uh, prone in the bicycle slab, sits broken and dead on the seafloor, its interior dark cavern. Deep inside the oceanic mine, something flickers in the ruins. Is that an artificer? It survived, or it was born here? Does that mean there are more? It looks dormant. Is it even alive? Wait, do you hear that? It's singing. I can feel. It knows. It knows what we were. We are. And it is afraid. I understand why. Look what humans did here. I'm sorry. Wait, no. Come back! It's gone. We should be going too. We are running down our oxygen and it's a long way back up. Come on, there's nothing left for us here.
Okay, time to go. I'm beginning the ascent. So they are still out there, the artificers. This is their planet and we owe them so much. I suppose it is your planet too, with the mine being a failure, the colony destroyed. You are its last artifact, born here. And now, this is my home too. Mine and Mine's. There's so much left for me to do. So much to study, so much to understand. Our history here, it is ugly. It's something I don't want to be part of. But this planet's future, maybe we can have a part in that. Minaya gave everything for the truth. Some residual part of the artificial has changed her, but I hope she knows. Knows that she succeeded. This place is no longer a secret, no longer vehicles to control. Thank you, Mina. And thank you to you for staying with me, for guiding me. Together I think we can make a change, show humanity by cause crimes, make them accountable. We both carry burdens here, but the past doesn't define us. Life continues here, despite everything that happened. I can find comfort in that. I think I'm going to stay. I don't have anything left out there, but here I have Mina, I have I have you. And I have a purpose. Someone needs to swim these waters to catalog this world. When I was little I swam every day, I would walk down to the ocean and step into it without a thought. I lost that, degree by degree, as earth oceans died, but here things can be like that once again. These waters can wash all the old ways away. And together we will see what's left when they do. And that was in other waters. I don't want to say what I think of this game, and I have to say that it was beautiful in its, in its simplicity. And I'm sorry, but my throat is giving up. So for now I'm gonna shut up. I thank you if you for staying with me for the whole journey. I hope you stay alive and see you soon.
Okay, I'm up on the com level. Come quick, I'm about to do something stupid. Repair the antenna. I'm starting to think I should have been an engineer. I know I said we would wait to be rescued, but I'm sick of waiting. Everything we have discovered together, this whole ecosystem, we need to share it. I'm about to broadcast it all. Your scars and maps, my notes and sketches, everything you know about Glee's 667cc. I'm sending it all, all the channels, a million data packets heading out into the black. That way we can be sure it will make it out. We don't own this place, not any more than anyone else. So we can't keep it just for ourselves. There's too much beauty, too much hope in these documents, too much of a future. All these hours of study and discovery, they've changed me, changed my life. But I'm ready for what comes next. Thank you for helping me get here. Right, that's enough of speech. I've talked enough for the both of us by now. It's up to you to do the honors. Hit the switch, it's time. Now the real work begins. Whatever was left of the oceanic mind, it is dead. Another failed experiment, another biological atrocity to add to humanity's list, but I don't want to let it define us and our role on this planet. We can't start fresh, I know that, but the artificials are still here and that means we can reach them. I want to show them we are curious, we are kind, we are able to live alongside them. There is still so much left to study here, so many questions to answer, but I'm not scared anymore. I'm excited to see what we can achieve in the time we have. People will come so here soon enough, and when they do, I want to show them what we have found, the evidence of Baikal's crimes and what we need to protect. If people can see this place for what it is, a second chance, then maybe they will want to protect it too. That's what my father believed, and my mother believed, that if people could understand what they were losing, they would want to save it. Let's get to work. <laughs>